God bless you, woman of God. Welcome to our channel. Today, we will be talking about procedures and methods that we can use to preserve food for long term. If this is your first time here, my name is Rosa. Don't forget to subscribe. And if you have a friend or a family member that doesn't speak English and you want to share this content with them in Spanish, send them to our channel, La Mujer de Dios. The link will be in the description below. As we have seen in the last couple of months, the topic of preserving food has been a very hot topic going around. Um, most of the videos that are watched in my channel, although we focus on the godly content and, and uplifting messages for um, mostly the women community. Uh, most of the uh, content of the video that people watch in my channel is the videos regarding to preparedness. And uh, I shared with you 25 foods, long lasting foods or forever foods that you can preserve for a long term. And I got a lot of comments, at least, um, especially in my Spanish channel, on what are the methods and what are the things that we use to preserve. So I want to share those with you. And I want to start with one of the most common methods used by me and by most of the prepper community. And it's the Mylar bags with the oxygen absorbers. To preserve food for long term, it is good to put it away and store it in a dry, cool, dark place. And uh, for you to uh, preserve the food for the longest time possible, it is commonly recommended that you use the Mylar bag inside a five gallon bucket. It will give you the airtight seal that you need to avoid any um, contaminants or for the growth of, of bacteria in your food. And it will give you the layer of plastic to preserve it from rodents to uh, help you give you that extra layer of protection from rodents. And the Mylar bags come in different sizes. This one particularly is the one used in the five gallon buckets. And they also come in different thickness for a stronger or, or tougher penetration to the bag. And I suggest or I recommend that you get those bags because you can preserve different types of food in that bag, rice, beans, flour, uh, wheat, um, wheat berries. You can preserve many things in Mylar bags. Most of the foods, not all of them, because please don't put oxygen absorbers in your sugars, but most of your foods, you need to add an oxygen absorber to it. For the five gallon Mylar bags, you need to use the 2000 mil um, oxygen absorbers. And when you open up this bag, please seal it in a mason jar or any other type of uh, airtight container so that the oxygen absorber doesn't continue to absorb the oxygen around it and go to waste. If it continues to absorb oxygen, it will come to the point that it will no longer have that capability in it and it will go to waste, it will damage. They also come, Mylar bags come in different sizes. This is a, a quart size. And this is a even smaller bag. And in this case, it's plastic, transparent plastic in the front. So you can see the contents in the bag. And it has the Mylar bag or the Mylar covering in the back. You seal it the same way on the top, but this one has a zip lock so that you can reseal every time you use after you break uh, the seal from the top you can continue to seal it to reuse the contents on the bag after open. So Mylar bags are one of the most uh, used manners or, or ways of preserving your food for long-term storage. Another staple in the prepper community is canning supplies, uh, canning jars and a pressure canner. I have here the Presto 23 quarts and it is a great equipment to have because you can preserve meats, you can preserve fruits, you can preserve jams, you can preserve vegetables, 
You can preserve potatoes, sweet potatoes. You can name it, and most likely you will be able to preserve it or to can it. So it is very important that you take the necessary measures and precautions and follow the instructions on the canning books to avoid botulism. But the fact that there is a possibility of botulism, which is like poisoning um, through food, we cannot be scared of processing our food or to can our food because this is one of the methods that has been most used and, and proven to be efficient for decades um, in United States and in other countries. So I would strongly suggest that you invest in some canning equipment. You will need this attachment so that your pouring doesn't um, spill out of your can. You should also get the airtight uh, seals for when you just want to remove the air from your canner to put it in your refrigerator or for dried goods, some dried goods that we want to preserve for a longer time. You uh, put the sealer, the jar sealer on the top and you remove the air with your food saver. And you can also do it with a brake bleeder. Um, you can find a brake bleeder for $14 in Amazon. It's one of those attachments that generally um, men use. Uh, my husband would probably use to um, bleed the brakes on a car. It's a manual pump and it would suck all the air out of your jar without any electricity. So I, I have one that I bought just for this purpose, not for working in the cars, but it is an excellent alternative in case there's no power. You can still do airtight seals with the brake bleeder and your attachments. You should get different sizes of the canning jars and also the rest of the utensils needed for canning, like the uh, tongs for grabbing the jar when it's extremely hot, the um, magnet lid so that you can put the lids on and take the lids off, right, if it's uh, warm, when they are warm, and the air bubble um, spatula to get the air bubbles outside of your canning jar. So you will need your canning supplies, your canning equipment. There is more than this, but I'm just giving you an idea of uh, items that we can use to preserve our food for a longer term. Another thing that we have is the food saver. As I mentioned before, the food saver is this machine here and it removes the oxygen from um, the cannon jars with the attachments, but it also removes the oxygen from these bags. This is a roll, which you make the bag into the size that you need. And it also, um, they also sell them in actual um, baggies, which is Ziploc bags that they are reusable. And you can put your food for, uh, be stored in the freezer and your meats will store longer and avoid um, freeze or frost from, the, from them being in the freezer. And it can also, um, absorb the oxygen, vacuum out the oxygen from the bags and you can preserve uh, dry goods in these bags for a longer period of time. There are preppers who have preserved dried milk for 10 years, or flour for seven years using the food saver and removing all the oxygen from the packets. So it is a great tool to have in your prepper arsenal. I will leave links to all these items in the description below that I will be mentioning here. Another great um, tool to have in your hand, I didn't mention it before, is a small hair straightener. Uh, normally to seal the bags, to seal the Mylar bags, people, can, people have used um, cloth irons. The iron that they use for clothing, they have used it for sealing the bags. But I feel that it's a little bit cumbersome to try and seal the bag with an iron. This is very inexpensive. You can find them for $10 in Amazon and you heat it up and it, you seal it, you know, with your hands going across from one side to the other. And it's a lot faster and easier. So it is an excellent alternative for sealing your bags. You can also, um, you, so, you should also look into finding some silica gel packs. Silica gel packs are um, 
those uh, little pebbles that you find in, in little baggies inside your shoes when you purchase new shoes or inside your electronic packaging when you purchase something new because it absorbs humidity. And these silica gel packs are like a cheap food insurance to put into your dried goods. If you have dried goods that uh, they don't get, get along with humidity, you should throw in a packet, a silica gel pack like the one that we have in this um, mason jar right here. We will be talking about this in a second, which is our dehydrated apples and the use of our dehydrator. But the silica gel packs you can place in every type of food that uh, would spoil or would uh, lose its um, normal shape because of the humidity. I particularly put a pack of it when I try to store my salt in um, bigger quantities, I put a silica gel pack inside that container so that the humidity doesn't clump my salt. So there's plenty of uses for the silica gel packs. It's very inexpensive. I suggest um, you get some of these. The other thing you can do is uh, find a dehydrator. Dehydrators come in different sizes, different shapes, different prices. You can find anywhere from $35 this one particularly was $150. There may be even more expensive, but the reason why I chose the Kosori dehydrator particularly, it's because it has a metal tray. Most of the dehydrators in Amazon have a plastic tray, and I was afraid that it would be very flimsy and that it would break easily. And this is an investment, and I want my investment to last the longest time possible. So these are metal, and the, and the Kosori is a stainless steel unit. So I believe um, it, it will last the longest from all the different uh, dehydrators that I saw in Amazon particularly, the plastic ones, the round ones, the detachable forms. I just thought that it would be um, very cumbersome and very difficult. Um, to maintain the stability or the longevity of that particular item. You can dehydrate a lot of things. I have a video coming up in the next few days of how we dehydrated oregano, Cuban oregano, uh, from our backyard. We, we have a plant of Cuban oregano in our, in our front yard, actually, and it grows out of proportion over the summer and it gives us a lot of leaves. So we processed them and we dehydrated the oregano and it is so delicious. It smells so good. Um, that video is coming up next week. So we also dehydrated some leftover um, apples that we had in the house. We normally purchase two, three bags of apples and sometimes the remainder of the apples um, they can go bad if you don't eat them on the right uh, the right time. So to avoid the apples rottening, we dehydrated them and we added a silica gel pack to the to the um, can and we sucked the air with our attachment. We sucked the air out and they should last a longer time in this manner. So it is a great way for you to make your food last longer in your shelf, it has it extends the shelf life of your food and it gives you an opportunity to process the foods. The society that we live in is no longer in touch with gardening, it's no longer in touch with producing their own foods. They are so used to going to the store and buying their foods. When I was a little girl, I remember um, going to my grandma's house, uh, she used to live in Puerto Rico, and I remember seeing how they produced their own eggs, where they had chickens, they had cows, they had um, a garden, and they produced a lot of the food in their own backyard. And that is something, those skills are being lost as time progress. And unfortunately, we don't live, we are living in a day and age that we no longer are, so confident that we will have the food we need at the store. We need to go back to our roots, back, back to pressure canning, back to dehydrating our own foods. And you can also dehydrate um, just with the sun. It just takes a little bit more skill and practice to do so. And if you have birds and, and um, 
things around your area that may eat your, your food that you're dehydrating, it defeats the purpose, which is why I got a dehydrator because I'm afraid the birds will eat my food. Um, but you need to get back to ways of preserving your food for long term. Another way to preserve your food is freeze drying your food. I particularly do not own a freeze dryer because it's very expensive. I'm going to put a picture of a freeze dryer right here. It is, uh, it fluctuates between $2,000 to $3,000, $4,000, the freeze drying machine. But a freeze dryer is extremely efficient and effective. You can freeze dry food that can last to 25 to 30 years. And yes, you can dehydrate foods um, in a way that it can last you a similar amount of time, 20 years, 25 years. But the freeze dried retains shape, retains nutritional value, and it can last a very long time. Time. I shared with you in our last video this freeze-dried strawberries from Dollar Tree but normally freeze-dried foods are very expensive if you're going to buy uh, a can of freeze-dried blueberries they are about $43 right now in Amazon and if you will be a person that will continuously buy freeze-dried food it may be a good investment for you to just buy a freeze-dryer but um, I know that is not within the reach of most of the people. It's not in my reach currently, and I know uh, maybe for some of you it's not in your reach, but I want to share with you the availability that that is something that you can do if you ever have the means to do so. I don't want to waste the opportunity to share with you a way to preserve your food in an inexpensive form. If you have two little sodas, two little bottles of, of soft drinks, you can preserve your dried goods in them. You can preserve rice, you can preserve beans. And a lot of our subscribers have shared with us that you can seal the bottle with candle wax. And what that would do is when you seal the bottle with the wax, personally, I've not practiced doing so, but I've, no, a lot of people have shared those tips with us that this is a form if somebody doesn't have the money to buy a Mylar bag and an oxygen absorber and seal the bottle with, with candle wax. It gives you a barrier from the elements of the outside for moisture and um, not on 100% from rodents, but it gives you a layer of protection. So that is a, an economic way that you can also preserve the foods. One last thing I wanna share with you are seeds. And I wanna share this with you because there is a possibility that you don't have enough space in your home to store two, three years of food. There is a possibility that you don't have the financial, um, the financial resources to buy two, three years worth of food. But if you preserve seeds, you can garden, you can plant them and you can garden your own food and it can supplement the food that you are saving. And it can, you can also end up preserving what you garden and what you plant with your um, supply, with the supplies that I have shared with you. But saving seeds is gonna be one of the best ways for you to preserve food. Um, this particular bag we purchased in Amazon, it has 34 uh, heirloom varieties of seeds. But in our home, we have also practiced or began to practice in the past six um, months to a year, 
saving our own seeds. Like whenever we eat something, we have begun to save our own seeds. Uh, for example, this one says lemon. So whenever we use lemons to make our lemonade, we take out the seeds and we uh, process them, we dry them, we preserve them so that we can plant them and use them in the future. If we uh, use a pumpkin, if we use any type of seeded um, type of fruit or vegetable, we are storing, we are saving the seeds so that we can garden and plant them in the future. I am aware that because of the genetically genetically modified foods that um, it's being sold to us at the stores, my friends. It's, it is just the truth. There's a lot of uh, fruit that is sold with seeds that will not produce anything. You will not get anything out of it. However, I will not lose the opportunity of trying to save seeds that may give me something. They may sprout. So we are saving seeds from purchased heirloom seeds and we are saving seeds from also the food that we eat to make sure that we have opportunities we have varieties we have sources so that in the future if if there comes a point in a time that we don't have the availability to go and purchase food at the store or we don't have the resources to purchase food at the store, we can garden our own food. So I urge you, if you have other ways of preserving food and you wanna share them with us, leave a comment down below. And if this video has been a blessing to you, give it a like and subscribe and I will see you on the next one. Bye-bye.